right, boys and girls, today's lesson is use your gifts for January the 28th, and it's winter quarter lesson number nine, and you are in Miss Kathy's class. MOG and I are so glad to see you. Remember to like and subscribe to our video. Today's lesson is from Romans, the... 12th chapter, <clears throat> the 3rd through the 8th verses. The key verse says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. And MOG is here to tell us that Romans is in the New Testament. Now today, you're going to insert your prayer. That means you're going to get your prayer later if you're in your class or you're going to pray on your own, come up with your own prayer. Stop and pray right here. You can turn the video off and come back, okay? And now we're going to go to From the Source from our NIV Study Bible. Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 3 through 8. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now remember that our key verse is we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Paul wrote that God had given him grace. That means favor that he did not deserve. That's what grace is. So Paul warned the Roman believers not to think that they were better than they were. Only by God's grace could they do what they did. They must be careful. They must carefully judge themselves by the amount of grace God had given them. Next, Paul said that the natural body has many parts. Each part, each body part has its own use. Likewise, there are also many believers. Each believer is part of the body of Christ and belongs to one another. Paul emphasized, that means he stressed with importance that by God's grace, every believer has different to you, has a different use. If your gift is prophesying or telling what God is saying well, is going to happen, foretelling and preaching, then prophecy, then you should prophesy according to your faith. And if your gift is serving, then serve. If you have the gift of teaching, then you are to teach. If your gift is to encourage, then give encouragement. If you have the gift of giving, then give generously. That means you don't, you know, stop at a certain point you give mm, from the heart and you give more not less if you have the gift to lead then you do it carefully if your gift is to show mercy kindness then do it cheerfully questions number one what is god's grace I'm going to move this out of the way. We'll see what the answer is. 
favor from God that we do not deserve. Number two, what did Paul say about our bodies? It said that each of us has one body with many parts that do different things. Number three, what does the body of Christ look like? In Christ, we are many but form one body with each member belonging to all the others. Question four, what did Paul say concerning gifts? He said, we have different gifts with which we have been graced. And number five, what gifts does he list? Prophesying, swerving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, and showing mercy. The Contemporary Story, and Exploring the Story in Ruby's Lab. What Gift? The Contemporary Story for January 28, 2024. Each week, Mrs. Walker ended youth group by saying, Use your gifts for God. This always confused Ace. Today, after the youth group ended, Mrs. Walker repeated it. Mrs. Walker, what do you mean when you say, use your gifts for God? I'm not understanding. How do I use my gaming system for God? Everyone, Ace just asked a great question. What I mean Ace, is that God has given every believer a, a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift is a special ability you have that can be used to bless others. Some of you have the gift to lead others. Others of you have the gift of teaching. I see the gift of giving in many of you. Those are the gifts that I'm talking about. So, because these gifts are ours, we can use them anywhere and anytime? Yes. God wants you to bless others by using them. So, as we leave, think about your gift and how you can use it. How did Mrs. Walker end youth group each week? By saying, Use your gifts for God. How did Mrs. Walker answer Ace's question? She said that God has given every believer a special ability that can be used to bless others. These special abilities are spiritual gifts. What type of gifts did she see in the students? Some have the gifts of leading, teaching, and giving. Here's a good discussion topic. Why is it so important to recognize the unique gift that we all have? Why is it even important to understand that every believer is part of the body of Christ and belongs to each other? Exploring the story in Ruby's Lab. Hello all, Ruby here. In today's lesson, Paul reminds us that every believer is a part of the body of Christ. And God gives every believer a gift or gifts to be used to bless others. Mrs. Walker explained that these gifts are spiritual gifts. A few of these spiritual gifts are prophesying, teaching, serving, encouraging, giving, leading, and showing mercy. I love teaching people about God's creation. Teaching must be my gift. When did you last think about your gifts, strengths, and abilities? Think about what you enjoy doing that 
helps others. And let's discuss it together. You can write to me all about your gifts at P.O. Box 74514, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or you can email me. That's my favorite means of communication at rubyredpanda at mail.com. A set of Ruby Red Panda at mail.com. Ruby Red Panda. I said a Ruby Red Panda. Ruby Red Panda at mail.com. All right. Let's see. We have um, an exercise that came from the activity book. The activity book is a separate book. And uh, if you order a set from, um, you know, if your teacher doesn't give you one from class, which you'll usually get at the end of the quarter, and uh, you can order these at the same place that you order the lesson book and the, um, yeah, the lesson book. And that is from the Sunday School Publishing Board. And the address will be at the end of the video. The website, too, I think. Well, I can th it's like the initial Sunday School Publishing Board, SSPB, NBC, this National Baptist Convention, dot com. So let's see. Oh, the lesson scripture, it reminds us what that is. And what we're going to do is circle the right word, read each sentence from today's scripture, Romans 3, 12, the third chapter and the, through the eighth verse, and circle the correct word from the choices given in parentheses. Again, turning on the pen, in number one says, in Christ, we, though many, Form one, should it be body or spirit, and each member belongs to all the others. And that's from verse 5. If you have your Bible open. Okay, so you got that one. It's body. And number two, do not think of yourself more highly or lowly than you thought. And that's from verse 3. All right. That's the time the front row said highly. And number three, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your life or faith. That's from verse six. All right. According to your faith. And number four, each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function or ideas. function. And number five, think of yourself with sober, good, or good. which one? Sober or good? Judgment in accordance, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. All right. Sober, which means think about it seriously. Sober thoughts are serious thoughts. Gift or not, true or false. Can you remember the gifts that were named in today's lesson? Read each of the words below. Identify if the word is a gift. On the line, write T if it's true that the word is a gift or false if it is false or not true that the word is a gift. Teaching. Oh, I remember that. That was even in the contemporary story. Fighting. Oh, I can't see that. So that one's false. Number three, encouraging. Oh, yeah. You can encourage someone as a gift. Prophesying. Telling them what's good, what God has said is going to happen. What am I going to put? Okay, that's true. And number five, showing jealousy. 
Oh, that one's pretty easy because even the Ten Commandments tells us not to do that. So that's false. Number six, showing mercy. Oh, yes. Showing anger is number seven. Oh, of course, that's false. You don't have to have a special gift to do that. Showing hatred. Of course, that is false. And number nine, serving. That's something we should all do. That's true. And number 10, sleeping. Oh, if it was a gift, I wish I had it so I could get enough sleep, but no. Number 11 is being prideful. You know, like a braggart, somebody that brags on themselves all the time about what they have and what they can do. Let's turn that into a big false. Giving. Remember, all of the children had a given spirit, giving spirit rather, in the contemporary story. So that would be true. Now, let's see. I'm going to fill in the blanks. Fill in today's blanks. Let's see. Don't look. See if you can fill in the blanks with the um, today's um, key verse the, that you haven't memorized. No, yes. Okay, let's see. So it says we have blank, blank, according to the blank, blank, to blank of blank. That is a lot of blanks. Okay, if you can, if you want to turn off the video and then come back, we're going to fill them in and we'll see what we have, okay? All right, did you get all of them? So the word should be different gifts, grace given each us. Lesson review from Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 3 through 8. Our key verse was we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. That is from Romans, the 12th chapter, 6 verse part A. So, the actions of believers, see Romans 12 and uh, our lesson scripture for today, 12, 3 through 8, they come up as something that the heart makes when it's attuned to God's character and will. When you know what God wants us to do, your actions show that and your heart is in tuned to what God wants us to do. So your behavior will show that and you'll walk like um, a righteous person as a living sacrifice. Okay. And that depends on your relationship with God because we're always supposed to reflect back the character of God from one person to the next. That means that you're going to show that you're humble and that you're willing to serve because you know that that is a gift from God to be able to serve and you're serving God. And that is something that is characteristic or should be characteristic of the Christian community. We're going to have to leave, but while we're away, MOG and I will be thinking about you, right? Remember to use your gifts to glorify God. You know, I say that all the time, and it just so happens that today's lesson was about this. Remember, tell us what how you use your gifts to glorify God. Mm. 
Okay, so tell us about that. We have a testimony. You can share it with each other. If you want to write to us, you can write to us at Miss Kathy's class at mail.com. Miss Kathy's class at mail.com. Or you can drop us a letter with the artwork and handwritten notes to our post office box at P.O. Box 74514, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ah, <sighs> well. I hate to say goodbye as usual, but we've got to go now because we love you. God loves you too. And you know that there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Bye-bye.